Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about the hottest interior design trends through the decades. I thought it'd be really fun. I love history, and I think it'd be really fun just to look at the different kind of biggest trends that existed in the decades, looking at the 50s all the way through to now, and look at sort of what trends really drove the decades, because I think it's really important when we look at new trends, things coming down the road, to really take a look at what's come before it, because oftentimes trends are a reaction to things that have happened in the past. So let's Let's break down decade by decade the hottest trends and my might even you know share my opinion on which ones were my favorites and which ones were not so awesome let's get going you all know how much I love Art Deco, and while I won't be covering the 1920s design in this video, today's sponsor Wayfair has a whole deep dive into Art Deco in their series, A Style is Born. Now, you may not know that Wayfair has its own YouTube channel with several different design series, but recently I've been loving A Style is Born hosted by Kaz Rowe. This show really dives deep into the weird history, drama, politics, music, television, and technology that birthed interior design movements. I love the high production value of this series and the use of archive footage to illustrate the design roots of the topic that they're covering. In this video, it's all about Art Deco. A Style is Born not only does a fantastic job explaining and showing you the history of major design trends, but they also incorporate specific pieces from Wayfair that fit into the design that's really explored in the video. That way, if you want to add some Art Deco into your home, you can easily find pieces that make sense for you from Wayfair. So if you're a bit of a design history buff like me, you'll want to check out their channel, which is linked in my description, and make sure you watch the newest episode of A Style is Born. And thank you, Wayfair, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's hop back into the 1950s and go over the hottest design trends throughout the decades. Okay, first up, we're gonna go through the 1950s. So the 1950s really was where we saw the kind of evolution of mid-century modern. This is kind of, it was inspired largely by sort of the Bauhaus movement that took place in Europe earlier on, but of course there was the World War II. And so this was really a decade that really fell into, at least in North America, where mid-century modern became super, super popular. Bauhaus House, Scandinavian design, these were sort of the inspiration points for mid-century modern. It was also an interesting time, I think, for technological advancement post-war. And so we saw some really interesting trends in design that came through from that. The two kind of biggest ones, I would say, would be new materials that have not really been used before. Think things like formica or chrome or plywood. A lot of molded sculptural furniture pieces became really popular because before that, we had a lot of handcrafted, handmade things, right? Things were made by hand and there weren't the kind of big machines and in industrialization necessarily that we saw in the 1950s. So a lot of molded plywoods came through. A lot of really interesting designs, a lot of really interesting chairs and sort of sculptural pieces came through. And that was really sort of the new manufacturing methods that became popular. Also, the middle class, especially in the United States, was growing very, very quickly in the 1950s and they needed a lot of furniture in the baby boom post-war. And so it really became easy to create lots of kind of interesting furniture at scale. So it was a little bit simpler in shape than what you had seen in sort of the handcrafted designs that came before. And again, you had those really interesting materials and manufacturing methods that made it possible to create affordable pieces to the masses in this kind of post-war era. Also, another trend I think it's really interesting is sort of the atomic influence or sort of the changing technology that we had seen, you know, in the post-war era that was really inspiring sort of design. So you you saw a lot of atomic age things. So a lot of trains and rocket ships and sort of really interesting designs that were sort of inspired by this sort of optimistic, technologically driven sort of era in history, which I think is really interesting and sort of really kind of drove a lot of the mid-century modern designs that we saw in the 1950s. So I would say those are the biggest, hottest trends that really defined that decade. Okay, and then moving right along, we have the 1960s, which is, an interesting decade, I think, for design. Very groovy sort of designs coming out in the 60s. Saw a lot of sort of pop art, really interesting sort of bright colors. Everything was very fun and like I said, kind of groovy. There was a lot of things like split level design became really popular. A lot of sort of conversation pits and sort of sunken areas, which I think that although the downside of those, I think, can sometimes lock you into a very specific floor plan, not to mention be a little bit hazardous for you know people that find it really difficult to get in and out of these conversation bits. So they really lock you into a, a certain kind of shape for a living or a formal kind of living space, but they are kind of cool. And they do create kind of a defined area for talking and relaxing, which was kind of really interesting design choice. You you don't, you see these pop up in design, you know, as you'll maybe see, you kind of see these pop out every kind of couple of decades as people renovate 
create their space, but I think they were really popular in the 60s. Also, you saw a lot of things like shag carpet. As I said, it was kind of a funky time. People were having a lot of fun with a lot of different materials, different styles. Definitely a really funky area for design, and I think it really was an evolution of what we had seen in the 50s, but sort of became a little bit more casual and a little bit more funky than what you'd seen. The 50s was a little bit more formal, I think, in some of its design choices, and a little bit safer, and the 60s was a little bit more experimental in that way. Okay, moving into the 1970s, another interesting decade in design. Different design styles started to become a little bit more popular, I think, in the 70s. The bohemian style, for me, I think was one of the design trends in the 70s that became really popular that ended up coming back into fashion sort of in the 2010s. We saw a lot of rattan was really huge in the 70s. Again, something that came back later on in the 2010s. So you saw a lot of rattan, a lot of macrame, a lot of earth tones. You also saw another trend, I think, in the 70s, which is inter really interesting that we st still see coming through. In fact, the 70s, I think, kind of disappeared. Well, the 70s were the 70s, but then a lot of the designs that we saw in the 70s started really coming back a little bit in the 2010s, which is interesting. Modular sofas, modular design became so much more popular in the 70s. So we're talking really big, funky, modular sofas being in, whether they were Italian designs, North American designs, whatever, where you could buy these different pieces and sort of create a sofa in a configuration of your choice. That type of stuff is still popular now. It's really come back in. Uh, you're looking at the RH Cloud Sofa is a really good example of a modular piece. And you're seeing more and more of that now, but this is something that really took root in the 70s. You saw a lot of these modular designs. Some of them were really successful. Some of them were really not great and hideous in my opinion, but a lot of them were really cool. And it it was kind of neat because you could sort of customize the size and shape of whatever groovy sofa you were looking for. You could sort of do that and uh, and you had the flexibility to kind of do whatever you want. You could put your armchairs and your ottomans and everything in whatever sort of shape and pattern you really wanted. Also a lot of color, I think in the 70s, I think, you know, really interesting sort of olive tones and really sort of interesting mustard and things like that were really popular, a lot more saturated. I think what you're gonna find is that as the decades go on, you start to see colors get a lot more desaturated. And the 50s, 60s, and 70s up to this point, to me, were very colorful decades. And you're gonna start to see we lose a lot of that color as we move forward. But in the 70s, you still saw a ton of color there, which was really funky and really cool. You saw a lot of pop culture and kitsch sort of being also really popular in the 70s. So things like disco glam, and you saw lava lamps, and sort of psychedelic colors really brought in. So a lot of really sort of kitschy, kind of cool, funky pieces being used as decor um, you know they're very sort of locked into that decade and I mean arguably some of them are coming back now but definitely kind of funky and weird conversation starters that's what I'll call them and the other thing that you saw I think which is an important trend to acknowledge in the 70s is brown wood paneling so you saw a lot of wood paneling in people's basements it was typically a veneer it wasn't going to be necessarily of the highest quality which I think separates a lot of the wood paneling that we're seeing now versus the stuff we saw in the 70s to me I I always think of this as an 80s trend, but it's really not. It started really in the 70s, maybe even the 60s to be honest, but really kind of took root in the 70s. And because people don't renovate kind of every five years or so, this stuff definitely clung on into the 80s, especially, you know, when you think of, um, you know, Joyce Byers house and Stranger Things, right? You know what I mean? Like it was an 80s show, but that stuff was definitely more of a 70s house. So you saw a lot of those sort of shag carpets and a lot of the wood paneling on the walls. They weren't always the highest quality. They weren't great, but uh, that was a trend that was very popular in the 70s that thankfully did start to go away as the decades went on because I don't think it's because it was not the highest quality it tended not to look great for long periods of time and so it's not my favorite trend coming out of this decade I'll be honest okay now moving into the 80s the 80s okay so to me I think the biggest trend that we had in the 80s which was true and carried through into the 90s as well is postmodern so you know in the modern era like we just talked about in the the the, the 1950s and 60s right so you had the mid-century modern, the modern era. And this era, you know, one of the things is that we tended to see that form followed function. So, you know, furniture designers and, and designers were looking at sort of what is the function of this piece? What is this table? What is this chair? What is this for? And how can we create a form? How do we create a piece that is going to best and in a most in a really direct way satisfy the function of what we're trying to achieve from this furniture piece? Okay, so that's, that's kind of the form follows function idea of modern design. Postmodern was like, hey, who cares? Let's just get creative and have fun and be weird. 
kind of, sort of. So you saw a lot of that come through in the 80s. The Memphis group is uh, sort of known for the group that kind of really pioneered this kind of line of thinking. And there was lots of other designers that were doing similar things, but they're sort of credited with that. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't sell a ton of furniture at the Memphis group necessarily because their stuff was maybe a little bit too weird, but it inspired a lot of really kooky, crazy designs that were coming through that were a little bit ironic at times. You know, they were really playful. They were maybe funny. They were maybe a bit silly and stupid, but they were interesting and you got to give them that. You saw a lot of really sculptural pieces that were uh, a little bit funky and a little bit weird and did not necessarily achieve the goal of being a simple functional piece, but they were fun and it was creative and that was kind of part of the fun. That to me is a really, really big part of the 80s. Also, you did see a lot of really funky colors that were definitely coming through, especially on some of those postmodern pieces. But I think we started to see the mainstream moving more towards sort of the peach, the blue, sort of a little bit more of those pastel colors became also really, really popular. So quite a bit more toned down than the kind of big, loud, colorful designs that were coming out of the Memphis group. And you started to see a little bit more pastels that were coming through as well. Okay, next up, we have the 90s. Biggest trends from the 90s. Oof, the 90s, not my favorite decade in design. I'm not going to lie to you. I think we saw a lot of the continuation of the postmodern trend that we had seen in the 80s. So that was still very much taking hold in the 90s. And so you did see a lot of sort of postmodern pieces. I would say minimalism started to go a lot more mainstream in the 90s than we had seen in previous decades. So these sort of a little bit more minimalist spaces started to become a lot more popular where people a little bit more maybe intentional, I guess, with some of the homes or some of the designs that they were doing. It started being a little bit more chic to have less things. Well, before that might not have necessarily been the case. Color palettes, I would say, became a lot more toned down. They started to continuing the trend that we kind of talked about in the 80s, but it started to become a little bit more desaturated. We saw a lot less color. So, you know, when I was a kid, I remember I grew up in the 90s. And so to me, it was like, you basically, if you walked into someone's house, they basically only had a few color options. You either had, your friend's houses were either dusty rose, like some sort of mauve. They were like a teal color, like a dusty teal. Everything was dusty. It was either a teal or it was a peach. Like those were kind of your three options. You, had, you had a peach home, a dusty rose home, or a teal home. Maybe all gray if you were really boring, but for the most part, beige. Like those were kind of really your options that you had in the 90s. Not a lot of room for a ton of crazy color here. We're, we're just basically all those colors were, you know, different areas of the color wheel, but desaturated down into something a lot more basic and um, boring, maybe a little bit, but it was a decade that, you know, we still saw some of those postmodern pieces coming through, but the color palette definitely felt very simple and desaturated. Shabby chic obviously became a lot more popular, I think, as an interior design style in the 90s, which, depending on your point of view, is chic or not chic, depending on how you look at it. But it was shabby, I'll give you that. So we're dealing with sort of artificially distressed furniture. You know, people were, I don't know, decoupaging things in the 90s. I don't know what they, Rosie O'Donnell was always going on about decoupaging on her show. So people were doing a lot more DIYs, I feel like. There was a lot more craft fair and we had uh, people doing a lot of interesting things with those. That's the word I'm gonna use. So there was a lot of that stuff that was really popular in the 90s. Again, with that really desaturated mauve, peach, teal, beige color palette. Yummy. Okay, and now we've arrived at the 2000s. Okay, the 2000s definitely saw the continuation of beige. I think the color palette felt very brown and very beige. And also different than the beige that we see now. Because I think now we see a lot of lighter creams and whites on the wall with sort of maybe some of the beige accents sitting sort of in front of them, different tones of beige. Back then the walls were beige, so it was really quite all-encompassing, basically. I think that we had a lot of these really heavy beige palettes everywhere in the 2000s. We also had the rise of the Tuscan Kitchen, which was very, very popular, which could feature a lot of like posters with wine bottles on them, uh, wine holders with grape leaves made of wrought iron. Gosh, what else did we see at the in the Tuscan? We saw the giant uh, hood fans over top of these fake distressed sort of tile pe Oof, it was a whole thing. What else was there? Oh gosh, we had the like Tuscan motif behind the uh, stove. So while you were, you know, stirring your pasta sauce or whatever, you could look out and look over fake Tuscany that you had in your tile work. Granite countertops. Granite countertops were coveted in the 2000s and those were a big part of the Tuscan kitchen. But honestly, even if you didn't have a Tuscan kitchen, you still wanted granite countertops. Those were the material of choice in the kitchen. It was a huge, huge trend. Everybody had to have it. And that was very much kind of how the 2000s, I think, were defined. It was very much focused, I think, on that kitchen. You know, a lot of reds, dark browns, espresso wood, that was kind of more the palette. But we also saw a lot of these creams and beiges, but it was just a really 
heavy yellowy beige that was kind of everywhere in the 2000s. Also this decade to me was really where we started to see, really started to see sort of the trading spaces content built around, especially in the mainstream, around interior design, perhaps I think a lot more than we did before. So trading spaces was a huge show on TLC and we just saw the kind of rise, I think, although you know these shows kind of existed before, but then it started to get really, really popular where people we're kind of getting a little bit more of a glimpse into other people's homes. And that became really popular and kind of inspired. We, we started to see, I think, the homogenization a little bit of design in some ways. So because someone did it on Trading Spaces, everybody had to have it. And there started to be a lot more content built around interior design and more kind of people sharing that content a little bit in the 2000s, especially on television. And so I think that created a lot more of these trends coming quicker and bigger and being all over the place. That trend of sort of the sharing of content around homes really escalated even more in the 2010s because we had the rise of social media. So Facebook came in kind of the mid 2000s, but Instagram and all that sort of really changed it. And I think there was a lot more sharing of what's happening in people's homes, real people's homes than we ever saw before. So before, you know, looking back in decades past, it was oftentimes the things that you saw on television. So sets and movies and TV shows and things like that. That's how you kind of saw how other people lived. 2000s, we saw the trading spaces, we started to see a little bit more of that happening on television. Now in the 2010s, I think we've really seen the explosion of house content on places like HGTV, but also here on social media, places even here like YouTube. So trends, I think, started to move a lot quicker in the 2010s because people saw them, came, loved them, put them in their homes, got sick of them, traded them out. And so we saw a lot of that kind of homogenization, I think even more as people sort of became inspired by slash copied each other, of course, as we do, and brought that same sort of stuff into their own home. So trends needed to be quicker and they tended to rise and fall, I think a little bit quicker than they did before. We saw a few design styles really pop through in the 2010s, became even more popular than they did before. I would say boho became very popular. So at first it was kind of colorful and then it sort of became a little bit more neutral, I think as the decade wore on. Mid-century modern kind of had a little bit of a comeback. So mid-century modern and Scandi together sort of really became very popular. So even if you look at furniture retailers like Ikea or Article. I mean, they do a lot of Scandinavian and mid-century pieces. This became the style that millennials really coveted. And so we saw a lot of simple shapes brought back in with design, uh, especially on your furniture pieces. They started to become a little bit basic and simple. The postmodern stuff we saw in the 80s and 90s was out and it was all about really simple, basic and minimalist, which was huge in the 2010s. Also the glam style became really popular, which was sort of a fancy style that relied on a lot of silver, gold, white, black, brass, things like that. And then it had a lot of interesting materials like rhinestones and glitter and feathers and things that sort of felt glamorous. That was at least the, the attempt. So glam, and of course, I cannot forget the mother of all design styles in the 2010s, which of course was modern farmhouse. So modern farmhouse was, I think, a very suburban style that kind of bridged the gap between rural. People that had modern farmhouse didn't actually live in rural areas. They lived in the suburbs. So it was really a suburban take on how people actually live on something like a farm. So it's a bit of a callback to an agrarian lifestyle, but done with a modern twist. So a lot of black accents, a lot of white, a lot of white, like it was basically everything was white. Maybe some light blonde woods, depending on if, you know, suiting your fancy, might've had a couple of signs, might have had some sort of farm motifs somewhere in there. So maybe you get one of those kind of like a cowhide rug maybe perhaps. So it felt a little bit rustic, but it also felt a little bit modern in sort of its uh, lighting fixtures and plumbing fixtures and things like that because people didn't actually want to live on a farm. So they wanted the conveniences that came with a modern life, but have a little bit more of a rustic sort of sensibility there. I think it's a very comfortable style for a lot of people, which is why it was so popular. Huge in the 2010s. This was the decade of Joanna Gaines. This was the style. So we saw the minimalist Scandi stuff we saw the boho stuff, we saw the farmhouse stuff, and we saw the glam stuff. That was really the styles that really defined the 2010s, and we're still living through it a little bit here in the 2020s, so yeah. Okay, and now we've got the 2020s. So here we are, I mean, it's only 2023 now, so I'm gonna do a little bit of predictions here as well in terms of where it's going. So um, I would say the 2020s so far, a lot of it is, 
I think a real swing of the pendulum away from sort of those mid-century Scandi minimalist spaces and more towards things that kind of a couple of different directions, right? There's the postmodern stuff, which is come back from the 80s and 90s. So a lot of sculptural pieces, a lot of squiggles, a lot of funky designs, maybe some irony, some playfulness in your design rather than just going for a simple basic minimalist, all gray, all white, all blonde woods, which is what we saw previously. So that's one direction. And then the other direction, which I think is a little bit more of a formal take on kind of that response is more traditional. So a little bit more detailing in some of your woodwork. You know, I think chairs became kind of a little bit more interesting and less sort of peg legs and a little bit more sort of ornamentation in some of the chair leg designs that we see in dining chairs and armchairs and things like that. It's definitely a lot of the cabinetry and it's a lot of little small things too. Like even cabinetry is a lot more detailed than it was before. Glass is maybe, you know, you might put in a fluted glass or something. So it feels a little bit different. Countertop edge profiles, instead of just going with a basic waterfall, which which is a fine choice. You're seeing a lot more different profiles that are maybe ones that were really popular in decades past or kind of a callback to a lot of traditional countertop profiles that we've seen before, but then they're brought in now in the 2020s because again, people are looking for a little bit more interesting sort of detail work being done as opposed to plain sort of basic minimalism, which we saw in the 2010s. So there's the postmodern kind of weird kooky crazy route, the stuff you see in Urban Outfitters, but you also see that even in designs from the likes of Kelly Wurstler, where it's, it's not really just, it's not feeling so juvenile, but it's maybe a more sophisticated take on postmodern, but then you're also seeing kind of this return to traditional. And I would say those are the two directions in the 2020s that we have seen design go that is in contrast to the 2010s that we had seen previously. So in terms of predictions for where the 2020s are going, I think it's going to see a continuation of that. I think different designs are going to feel a little bit more elevated. I'd like to see the glam style. I think moving more towards Art Deco would be maybe more interesting. So investing less in sort of the cheap um, sort of gaudy materials, if I'm being honest, which, you know, I always am. And more towards maybe some more luxurious materials like actual marble as opposed to marble contact paper, you know, stuff like that. And uh, so we're seeing that a little bit more. Uh, modern is evolving to feel a little bit less plasticky and uh, a little bit less plain and becoming maybe like mixing in with some organic modern. So maybe kind of mixing some interior design styles, some more rustic elements in there to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit kind of less sort of plain and boring like we had seen before. Postmodern, as I said, is another trend I think that will continue. It definitely feels like the younger generation, people that are just coming up now and they're furnishing their spaces, you know, they're in their kind of early 20s, they're going to get older, more people are going to kind of enter in and are going to be purchasing furniture. And that is, of course, going to drive new trends. And I think that this trend towards postmodernism is, uh, you know, finding those really intricate sort of funky pieces and things that you can thrift and things like that. I think that will be more popular as the 2020s continue. And I think we're also maybe going to see a little bit more color. I mentioned earlier that like color really has been desaturated as the years have gone on. And I think some people are thinking that it's time to amp up a little bit of the saturation on some colors. Now, look, there's some maximalist spaces that are definitely getting a lot of airtime on social media. But even if you're not prepared to go maximalist, I think the all white kitchen, all gray kitchen is even turning into being a little bit different by even just adding wood, which I know you're like, well, wood's not really a color. Well, yeah, compared to an all white kitchen, it is. Adding more olive green, forest green, rusty reds, a little just, you know, navy blues, sky sky blues, just really more color in there. I don't think we're gonna go back to big, bold, saturated, bright orange couches like we had in sort of the, the 60s and 70s, but I do think there's going to be a little bit more color brought in because I think people are a little bit tired of the basic neutrals. Neutrals are beautiful, but I think we're gonna see more of that in the coming years, which I think is a welcome breath of fresh air because I would say also the other big trend I'm seeing in the 2020s is mixing interior design styles. So if in the 2010s, we saw a lot of those very particular styles be super popular, I think in the 2020s, people are gonna have a little bit more fun in mixing interior design styles. I'm even seeing that on this channel in the comments section with you guys talking about how you can sort of take industrial, for example, but then maybe mix it in with a different uh, interior design style. You know, can I take a Scandinavian design, but can I maybe mix in a little bit of some traditional in there to kind of give it a little bit of a new flavor and a new spin? I think as people 
have shared their stuff, their homes on social media, we've seen that they all kind of tend to look the same. And so I think people are looking for something really individual and that's what's driving a lot of the trends going forward. People mixing in design styles to find their own personal one, which I think is an overall great trend that I hope continues throughout this decade. So that's it for me for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. This was a fun one, looking back at all the different decades gone past and what were the trends that drove them? And also like, why do I think it matters? And where do I think design is headed in the future? So I hope you really enjoyed this one. I'm gonna throw here to my video of the interior design styles that are driving all the trends because I touched on postmodern, I touched on modern organic and traditional, and we're gonna talk about all that in that video. So go check that one out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.